Hey there, welcome to my channel. My name is Alma and this is Eternal Bliss. For today's video, I want to share with you four principles, four teachings, four powers that can literally change your life if you decide to adopt them as part of your belief system and also to stay integrated and practice them throughout the year. As I am filming this video, today is December 31st, 2017, which means that it is the last day of the year. And so this is a perfect opportunity if you are watching this um, in the beginning of the year or any time of the year to take a look at your goals and what you want to achieve moving forward in the future and to achieve the best possible uh, results in everything that you put your effort into. If you apply these four principles that I'm going to be talking about, then you will see amazing results and you will definitely feel a change not only in the way that you interact with others, that you experience relationships, that you manifest your desires, but also in the way that others relate to you and how you radiate a new energy onto others. These four principles are called the four tatpas. They are basically four powers. And I say powers because when you practice them, they are like a muscle. The more and more that you practice these principles, the stronger the characteristics become in you and your life and your beliefs and thought currents. These four principles were uh, taught to me by my guru, Paramahamsa Nityananda. They are part of his core teachings. And uh, I'm sharing them with you because they have definitely been very beneficial to me. So I hope that you enjoy them, that you uh, think about practicing them and integrating them into your life. The first principle is called authenticity. Authenticity is basically being and doing the best that you can at all times, aligning yourself to your best inner image. Inner image and outer image is basically inner image, the way we feel about ourselves, how we see ourselves. Outer image is what we portray to others as us. So when you are authentic, you are living up to your highest outer image. So you are living up to your highest potential and also you are living up to uh, the image others have of you. So for example, if you are a salesman and your boss sees a lot of potential in you and he's expecting you to meet a certain quota of sales and you authentically do your best at your job to try and sell as many cars as possible or as many whatever it is you're selling, um, and you're doing it authentically, it means that you're giving it your all. You're putting all of your effort to reach that quota. Now, this sounds like you're living up to someone's expectation, but that's not the case. Authenticity is, is living up and, and fulfilling your own image. So if you decide that for the new year, your resolution is to become more patient or perhaps more friendly, more outspoken, then practicing every time that you're with someone, if um, you decide to be more friendly, if every time you're with somebody, you're actually genuinely, authentically being more amicable and more pleasant, then you are living to your, uh, your in the image that you've created for yourself that you want to achieve. When you do everything with authenticity, the results are obviously going to be much better than when you do everything half-assed. So that is the first principle, authenticity. The next principle is integrity. Integrity means that you basically do what you say you will do. You will fulfill all of your promises and you will also be constant and persisting in doing actions that will lead you to achieve your goals. So for example, if in the new year you want to lose weight or you want to run a marathon, you want to um, gain a certain amount of income, well, to stay integrated to that means that you're going to do as you say you will. So if you have a weekly goal where you will say, every week I'm going to lose a pound, then that means every day you're going to track your calories, you're going to uh, do a workout that will burn a certain number of calories. And so when you stay integrated and you authentically commit to your workouts and your meal plans, then obviously you will meet your goal. So integrity also means that uh, you, you fulfill and you stay integrated to that which you have claimed uh, for yourself. So for example, if you say, 
Um, I, I commit to coming in on weekends to volunteer and to do this and that. Well, being integrated means that you are going to fulfill those responsibilities that you have set upon yourself. You are going to fulfill your word. When you practice integrity and you don't flake out on people or situations, then you're creating a power called VAK, where everything you say becomes a reality. And this is real. This is not just some magical mumbo jumbo. The way that works is that the more you practice integrity, the more that you do those things you say you will do, the more you start believing in yourself, creating confidence and knowing that you can create and manifest anything that you want. So when you declare through the power of VAK, when you declare that by the end of this year, I will make an extra $20,000, it becomes a reality because you are putting yourself completely integrated into that goal and you're doing everything you can to achieve it. So everything you say becomes a reality. The next power is uh, responsibility. Responsibility is a big one. And it might sound like common sense, like, oh yeah, I'll just be responsible and you know take care of business and handle what I gotta do. But there's more to it than just that. When you take responsibility for yourself as well as others, you become divine. There's a really good quote by Swamiji from one of his satsangs, which I will be sharing the link to in the description box of this video, where Swamiji states that a being who does not take responsibility for himself is an animal. A being who takes responsibility for himself only is a human being. A being who takes responsibility for himself and others is a divine being. A being who takes responsibility for himself, others, and the entire cosmos is an incarnation. So really think about that. What do you want to be? Do you want to be a lower vibrational being, not even worthy of being called an animal? Because animals do take uh, care of their own responsibilities. They do take care of their youth. Or do you want to be an incarnation? Do you want to take responsibility for everything that's happening. And this could mean you want to take responsibility for the environment. You want to take responsibility for the well-being of all creatures, not just humans. Or do you just want to take care of yourself and be responsible for you and live a selfish and egoistical lifestyle? It's up to you. The choice is yours. But understand, uh, responsibility is definitely a great tool to have in your kit of how to survive life. When you assume responsibility, you develop leadership consciousness, which means that you become a natural leader. And when you're a natural leader, when you're authentic and you're a very strong, um, responsible person, people start listening to you. People start respecting you. People start treating you with admiration. And this is not for egoistical purposes. This is actually for you to know that when you take responsibility and you develop that leadership consciousness, you can make great changes in people's lives. You can become a, an influential person for the best. You can become a mentor. When you decide to take responsibility for others, you can become a teacher. You can become a big brother or a big sister. So definitely responsibility is a wonderful trait to develop. And the more you practice, the easier it becomes. Sometimes you might feel like, oh, I, I just can't take responsibility for everyone. I, I need to be on the lookout for me. I come first. And that's perfectly understandable. However, the more you practice, and it can be little baby steps, you know, like for example, picking up trash that's not necessarily yours, or if uh, you use up all the paper towels in the office pantry, replacing them. These are little things that it's not necessarily your responsibility, but you decide to do it anyways. The more and more you do these little things, the bigger responsibilities and tasks that you are able to handle. Swamiji says that a person who handles a lot of responsibility develops really strong shoulders. And that's definitely a truth and something to think about when uh, considering taking up more responsibility in your life. The last principle is called enriching. And this is definitely one of my favorites that I really enjoy practicing and has really helped me become stronger, more mature, and more responsible for others. Enriching is basically when you decide to share all of your knowledge with the world. You decide to share um, your abundance, everything, to enrich others, to make the lives of others better, as well as yourself. 
To enrich yourself would be something like going back to school, learning a new trait, or perhaps uh, adopting a spiritual practice such as meditation, or joining um, a club to develop new friendships. Um, so that that would be those would be examples of enriching yourself. Now to enrich others, an example of that would be let's say that you work at a law firm and you're a great lawyer. Well, if you decide to enrich others, perhaps you'll take on a protege. You'll become a mentor. Um, let's say that you're a great cook and you're very passionate about a vegan lifestyle. Well, perhaps you decide that you are going to take the responsibility to enrich others about the vegan lifestyle by releasing a cookbook with vegan recipes or perhaps uh, sharing valuable nutritional information on social media about veganism. So enriching others means you sharing your passion with the world. So you're sharing the best things that life has given you with others. And in return, you only get more and more and more satisfaction. You become so fulfilled and complete that your life starts just becoming awesome. You start developing new friendships. Um, you develop so much more confidence when you start teaching others because teaching others what you already know makes your knowledge even more powerful. It makes you more knowledgeable, more, more open to new possibilities and ideas and also sharing your information and wealth and knowledge, talent with others opens the door to abundance. If you are somebody who donates money to charity, then you already know that the money just keeps coming back and growing and growing. Same thing if you donate your time, you're going to find that everything you think you need to take care of gets taken care of by existence. Existence starts taking care of you. So definitely um, employ enriching into your daily daily activities. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean that you have to go out and start a YouTube channel or you have to write a book or become a mentor. It can be small little things. For example, let's say that um, you're at a family reunion. It's the holidays you're gathering with family. You can enrich them by answering questions about your preferences, whether it be your dietary preferences, your um, spiritual practices. You can enrich them about that. If somebody has a, an issue they're going through and you've been there, you've overcome that difficulty, then you can always enrich them and share how you did it, how you overcame adversity. So that would be a form of enriching. So these four principles, authenticity, integrity, responsibility, and enriching are very useful and are the key for you to manifest the best lifestyle that you possibly can. If you have any questions about any of these four principles, let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, like, and share. And uh, also, I want to wish you a happy new year once again. Um, today is the last day of the year. So if you're watching this today on release day, have a happy new year. And until next one, see ya.